Today, a Russian cruise missile hit a residential area there, killing two people and injuring 18 others. Other civilian buildings in eastern Ukraine are sustaining extensive damage. CNN's cameras were rolling when a village market was attacked. A senior official in the region is urging the 70,000 remaining residents to evacuate now before Russian forces move in. Ukraine knows all too well what happened the last time Putin's forces occupied Ukrainian towns. More than 900 bodies of civilians have been discovered since Russia withdrew from areas around the capital, according to local police. Many of them showing signs of torture, rape and brutal execution. CNN's Ed Lavendera is in the port city of Odessa. Ed, you recently went to a city that Ukrainian officials say is under attack by Russian troops in retaliation for the sinking of that flagship, one of Russia's key assets now at the bottom of the Black Sea. What did you see in that city? Well, the city of Mykolaiv under constant attack once again today. The mayor says that Russian airstrikes hit a kindergarten building. We've seen images of a playground also destroyed uh, by ex explosions. Uh, this comes as this is a city that is bracing for an offensive from Russian forces. The cluster of explosions jolted this residential neighborhood in Mykolaiv Friday morning. Witnesses say some people were walking their dogs in a park at the time. One of the munitions struck just feet away from an Orthodox church. You can see the impact spot of one of the munitions that went off this morning. And as you look around here, you can see the impact and the, the damage done to this church here as well. Multiple people were killed and more than a dozen others injured. Paramedics treated victims on the scene. Across the street, under the shattered windows of an apartment building, this man told us he helped drag two injured people into a store for safety. Shum, shum rakete. He was a noise, the noise of a rocket flying and explosions. That's what I saw and heard when I was in the shop. People ran into the store and I saw people scared. I saw people dropping to the ground from explosions. The sounds of explosions inside the city started around mid-morning and appeared to strike at least three different locations. Mykolaiv authorities released this video of a private home burning after a rocket strike. Mykolaiv strikes come as residents in southern Ukraine are worried about Russian retaliation for the sinking of the Moskva warship in the Black Sea and Russia's renewed offensive in eastern Ukraine. In recent days, CNN has witnessed long convoys of families fleeing Russian-occupied areas near Mykolaiv. This bombing struck a densely populated area. Galina Mironchuk says she was brushing her hair when the bomb landed just outside her apartment window. The blast shattered the glass and shattered her sense of peace. Did you think something was going to happen to you? I didn't think of anything, she tells me. I thought that was the end of the world. The recent attacks have also crippled parts of the city's infrastructure. The water has been out for three days, forcing hundreds of people to get water from a river and natural spring. This man evacuated his mother and plans to stay in the city to fight off the Russians. How worried are you that the Russians are getting closer? It worries me a lot, he tells me. That's why I sent my mother away. That's why we are getting ready. We are still working, but if the Russians are close, I will fight them. For now, residents are left to clean up the bloody aftermath and brace for the next attack. Paula, and we've spent several days traveling through the areas around Mykolaiv near the front lines. And what stands out and when you talk to people is that people in, in the city of Mykolaiv and in the regions and the small villages near those front lines, they say they are vowing to stay in place to fight the Russians once they push forward in this expected uh, renewed offensive. Paula? Ed Levendera, thank you so much for that reporting. Now I am joined by former Commanding General, U.S. Army Europe uh, and 7th Army, retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling. General Hurtling, all right, we're about six weeks, some odd six weeks into this war. Ukraine has just taken out a nuclear-capable Russian warship. Though I will note, U.S. intel officials say they don't believe it had nuclear weapons on it at the time. 
And now we see Russia appears to be retaliating for that. So is this a turning point in this invasion? I don't, I don't believe it is, uh, Paula. They're going to continue to try and execute uh, the operational and the strategic plan that Mr. Putin has adjusted uh, significantly uh, to continue the attacks in the east, uh, try and take key cities, which will allow him to uh, have a maneuver warfare against the Russian military. But I, I believe that uh, the Ukrainian military is, is ready for that kind of action in both the east and in the south. You know, we just saw Ed Lavender in Mikhailov. The first time that Russia attempted to attack that city, the, the territorial forces of Ukraine and the citizens fought them off. Uh, their attempt was to get through that city and then go further west to Odessa. But what causes concern in that area is there's a river, a, a very wide river uh, outside of Mikhailov called the Bug River. The Russians can't get across that Bug. And, and if they can't get across that river and they can't conduct an amphibious operation on the beaches uh, near Odessa, it's going to be very difficult to extend their operations to the west. Well, as Russia prepares a likely eastern assault, Pentagon officials say the terrain there is different, so the fighting will be different. Can you lay out how exactly is the terrain here different and, and how is it going to be distinct from the sort of urban warfare around Kiev? And which side really has the advantage based on those factors? Yeah, the terrain, the terrain north of Kiev uh, is, is swampy, a lot of marshlands. The, the Ukrainian word for it is Raspatita. Uh, the, the Russian forces could not get off the roads even if they had wanted to. So they were limited and roadbound uh, coming out of Chernev and, and uh, Kharkiv uh, toward Kiev. Uh, so there was difficulty in terms of a maneuver. And we define maneuver by fire and movement. In the east, uh, it's also going to be difficult. Yes, it is different, different terrain. It's flat land. It's more like Kansas, as uh, Secretary Kirby said the other day. I'm sorry, uh, Admiral Kirby said the other day. And it's going to be a little bit easier uh, to maneuver forces. But truthfully, the Russians have really not shown the capacity to maneuver. Their forces are not well trained in that. Uh, they, they are lacking manpower for that renewed offensive in the east. And I believe that uh, the Ukrainian forces have been preparing through exercises and training events to conduct uh, small-scale operations, counterattacks, countermaneuvers against the Russia. So it, it's going to be very intense, certainly in terms of the fighting, but I still believe that the Ukrainians have the upper hand even in the east. And the Ukrainians are expected to get this heavy weapon shipment from the U.S. The fact that it's getting there ahead of Russia's offensive, will Russia be forced to sort of adjust their approach here? Well, they, they may try, Paula. This is the interesting thing that, that those of us in the military have been watching. We don't believe, I don't believe, that Russia can adjust the way they've been conducting their operations. They are too hidebound. Their generals do not have uh, the adaptability. The force itself is not well trained. They don't have the sergeants who will direct the, the forces that the soldiers cannot maneuver off roads. Sometimes they don't even have maps to know where they're going. So <clears throat> Ukraine forces have been taught this over the last 10 years. They've gone, a, gone through a transformation in their military. So we're going to see quick reaction forces from the part of the Ukrainian countering some of the Russian attempts to get off roads. Intelligence is going to be critically important. All the new weapon systems that we've been talking about for the last several days are also going to be crucial, especially the uh, counter artillery radars that can tell where Russian artillery is coming from. And then the Ukrainians can fight back with long range fires as well. But, you know, the, the fact is we're going to see a lot of uh, new equipment inserted in the, into the battlefield on the Ukrainian side, that's always challenging for any force. I, I mean, I'll tell you, when I was in Iraq and, and we were delivered MRAP trucks, not a very difficult uh, piece of equipment to incorporate into the force, it still takes time to get used to and get the bugs out, if you will. Uh, and I think you, the Ukrainian forces are going to have a little of that, but I think they've got the upper hand in being able to apply those forces as they go against the Russians. It's been interesting. We've seen Russia formally warn of, quote, unpredictable consequences if these U.S. weapons shipments continue to go to Ukraine. Obviously, the U.S. isn't going to stop because of this diplomatic message. So what is the purpose of sending this signal 
from Moscow? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of a threat and a bluff, Paula. Uh, the Russians know they have not performed very well in all aspects of the battle space. So what they have left is nuclear weapons and perhaps cyber attacks. So those are the two things they are threatening without saying it. But, but without an army to back up those threats, even the threat of nuclear weapons or cyber attacks, and the fact that we have had a long time to understand through our collection of intelligence what they might be doing next, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's important never to underestimate your enemy, but these kind of threats are more bluffs than they are actually threats. The only problem is uh, any kind of a bluff that has to do with nuclear weapons, you always have to take seriously because of the destructive power of those types of weapons.